This is how you know racism all over the world. This looks like old people having sex. <laughs> <laughs> Different kind of nasty. <laughs> this is why you don't pay with your own shit. Man, this is why you don't use the toilet at 3 o'clock in the morning. Man. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think? Come on, tell me what you think.
What do you think? What is this? I show you mine, you show me yours. Depending on how good yours is. <laughs> Looking at the rest of his work, I would say that these are all works of a child. How parents work. But also a parent living vicariously through their child. It's a reflection of our realities, really. I mean, we create proxies of ourselves and proxies of others to make our world seem more familiar. So we feel less alone. Seriously, that's all you're going to say? No, 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 go on. Call me intrigued. Well... I'd say this parent is probably afraid of death. And this is the only way to keep those thoughts at bay. Thoughts of one day falling into oblivion ceasing to be relevant, to be recognized. I mean, take Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt? Yes, Brad Pitt. Beautiful man. Mashallah. So Brad Pitt is a proxy of Robert Redford in that he's the same phenotype, but characteristically speaking, he's even molded himself into a similar persona. Oh. That's a whole lot of big words, eh? Don't act dumb, it doesn't suit you. Well, similarly to how Kate Winslet is a proxy of Meryl Streep. That's it. You can apply that to a host of different actors, actresses, celebrities, people in general. You feel me? I'm still thinking about how Hugh Jackman is a singing, dancing Clint Eastwood. <laughs> So what about you? No, hold on. So kids are just proxies to you. To a degree. It's the ultimate pursuit of vanity, isn't it? I don't know. Seem... What? Cold? Soulless? Enlighten me then. I don't know. Oh, come on. You're just gonna leave me hanging? All... exposed? Did that sound sexy in your head? Yeah, kind of. Oh, landed on creepy. <laughs> you know, I, I felt it as it left my mouth and I thought I would just own it. Is that a smile? <laughs> and now that we're back on this creepy ground, tell me. I picture a father. Father, proud of his son. But a father who wanted nothing else but to be an artist, you see? All he wanted was to tell a story to the world. But no matter how much he tried, or no matter how much corporate Kool Aid he drank, it wasn't enough. It wasn't even close. You see, his father would come home to his family, to the wife. And son, who I think he loved, was just dream. But you see, this day was like, not like any other actually. Because the father and the wife began to argue. The father stormed out of the house for the very last time. Nobody really remembers what the argument was about, but everybody seems to remember what came after. And on the way to the job he hated, the truck jumped the red light, smashed straight into him. turning dad's car onto its side, encasing him into a metal coffin. All 
all he had left was the canvas of his roof and his own blood what was left of his right hand the artist, my father began to paint he painted that there and some of that other stuff the doctor said it was because of the head trauma but I don't really get it this is all he left. This is his love. This is his art. This is his masterpiece. Bullshit. What? You heard me. Now this is a pretty fucked up way to try and impress a girl. Come on, take one. You like it? It's strawberry. You know, I see you coming in here most days. You sit on that bench there. I know what you're doing. You just landed all over on Creepy again. What? You're not here to look at paintings or sculptures or to fake some token of culture. You're here to visit him, aren't you? Your dad. You know, I don't even remember what his face looks like. No, this, this isn't his masterpiece. You are. Can I get out of here?